to have you join us on agri -Biotech for today as we discuss biotechnology options of addressing the Maruka port borer menace in Nigeria. I am Lara Afolayo. The Maruka port borer is an insect pest that affects cowpea plants, popularly known as beans in Nigeria. It remains the major challenge to the crop's production in this part of the world. This challenge to beans farming in Nigeria and the BT solution to it has been discussed several times on this program. We shall be visiting the issue once again today as we take you to the Institute for Agricultural Research at the Amadubele University in Zaria, where the project's confined field trial was carried out several times before the approval for environmental release earlier this year. But first, let's take a look at some developments in agricultural biotechnology. A new report on a study by Amsterdam-based Access to Seeds Foundation on the performance of 23 major seed companies in 22 West and Central African countries has shown that the poor performance of Africa's seed industry is threatening food security on the continent. The study has it that the overall picture is one of international and African seed companies falling short in delivering quality seed and new varieties to smallholder farmers, which limits the potential to address food security, nutrition and climate resilience. It adds that while there is a growing number of seed companies active in the region, both homegrown and international, less than half of the 23 companies researched conduct plant breeding in Western and Central Africa, limiting the release of new varieties adapted to the region. The report also found out that though an increasing number of seed companies have launched on the continent over the last decade, they are not investing in breeding new varieties locally for the benefit of farmers, and that many of the companies apparently have built a business model around importing and distributing seeds instead of investing in local and plant breeding programs for the development of new seed varieties. Award-winning Irish biochemist Richard Murphy is optimistic that public attitudes about biotechnology's use for food will change as efforts are intensified in agriculture to produce more crops for an ever-growing population. He adds that if the use of the technology allows for increased productivity without having the same damaging impact that traditional increases will have, then it's time to open up a debate. The scientist was speaking at the Alltech Ideas Conference, organized by the global agricultural firm Alltech, which annually brings together almost 4,000 people from over 70 countries to explore innovation, inspiration, and world-changing ideas. Mark Leons, the company's president and chief executive officer, also expressed concern that genetic engineering has been miscommunicated over the years, leading to a bad public perception towards the technology. Farmers in Nigeria have identified Maruka insects as their biggest problem in cowpea cultivation. Maruka's damage to cowpea plants results in a reduction in size and quality of harvest. Maruka-resistant cowpea seeds have already been developed through public-private partnerships managed by the African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF. This particular cowpea variety has been modified through the Bacillus thuringiensis gene, also called the BT gene. We once again bring you this report on how the AATF's Maruka Resistant Cowpea Project has worked to bring solutions to the Port Bora Pest Challenge in Nigeria's cowpea industry. Africa accounts for 65% of the world's cowpea production. The commodity is consumed by over 200 million Africans, and this explains why it is grown on over 12.5 million hectares of land in sub-Saharan Africa. Cowpea is considered the most important food grain legume in the dry savannas of tropical Africa. It is not only rich in quality protein, but is a good source of quality fodder for livestock and provides cash income for farmers as well. 
But the pod borer, scientifically known as the Maruca vitrata, a major lepidopterian pest which inflicts severe damage to cowpea crops, remains a threat to yields in Nigeria. Maruca, number one, it doesn't have, there's no cowpea variety that has a natural cultivar that can resist it. You know, so some others, somehow you can manage to have some resistant varieties. But this uh, Maruca vitrata is really, let me use the word, a very stubborn pest and very hard for farmers to deal with. Farmers could lose up to between 70 and 80 percent of yields when the Maruca infestation is severe. This is the damage caused by pod soaking box. It boils into what? The pod. And this one is likely even to escape the heavy infestation of those uh, pot soaking uh, box also causing a lot of damage to cowpea pod and this one also cause, uh, reduced the yield in the farmer's field. The Africa Agricultural Technology Foundation ATF has introduced a pod borer resistant cowpea project to boost cowpea production in Nigeria and other countries in sub-Saharan Africa. So it's meant to increase the productivity of uh, beans by addressing some of the constraints that farmers encounter in the field, specifically the constraints of insect pest attack, which ravages the field. We have been able to find out the performance of this potentially new variety which will be grown by farmers. It has a yield advantage of at least double fold of what is expected with only two sprays of insecticide. Confined field trials for testing the efficacy of the Bt gene in controlling Maruca has been successfully conducted in Nigeria by the Institute of Agricultural Research at the Amadou Bele University in Zaria. Agribiotech visits the trial site to see how the crops are doing. First, we visit the glass house where the Bt gene, which confers resistance to the pod, is transferred to allow for improved cowpea varieties in this nursery. And then we move to the field trial site where the genetically modified crops from the glass house nursery are planted beside the conventional ones. The scientists here say the difference between the two crops become clearer and clearer as they begin to bud. To my right is the conventional local varieties planted by farmers, which is photosensitive, meaning they don't flower until when the day length is short. So this is a disadvantage, particularly with the prevailing uh, changes in our climate. But when you look at uh, the transgenic line here, they were planted together with these the same day. This flowered, matured, and even has been harvested. So even with the elicization we experienced this year, you can see this one has escaped the elicization and there is not uh, going to be any way we are going to have crop failure here. Local cowpea farmers are involved in this project. They say the experience here shows that the Maruca pest can indeed be put at bay without having to spray so much chemicals. They add that these improved cowpea varieties could reduce planting cost, increase yields as well as income. The normal one we have been growing will be having a lot of problems along the line, which especially during spraying. We spray up to eight, seven to eight times within the season. And then with the new one now that you have seen, uh, it is it's more, it's of more benefit because we have to spray less than that time. And uh, the earliness of the, the early variety, the new variety, counts a lot because between no time, it's almost due. And then you have uh, food for the family. Uh, one way kid akabamu no mukazu mukishuka. Kuma mung had a shida in namu local the mukishuka. Kuma gashi aeda yen yen yet the muki mush aki by ki there. Gashimon samoni bumbunch. She won in the akabamu mukashuka the bank. Yabam bunted one the mukishuka. It is quite interesting to see that the genetically modified variety looks exactly like the organic ones. Can you see? Can you tell me the difference? Can you see the difference? Yes, no. No. 
because morphologically the genes has no effects or this does not alter the morphology of the seed, the morphology of the plants also. The field trials have been carried out successfully and the crops are vested, but there is no damage to the environment as claimed in some quarters. The land here is now to be used for future confined field trials. If you look at this land, this is a confined field trial that was uh, started this trial with for almost nine years now. I look at the soil, nothing has been changed with the soil from that uh, 2009 to date. We have been planting this uh, transgenic materials and nothing changed with the, uh, in, in, in terms of the soil uh, qu quality. Scientists involved in Nigeria's Maruka resistant cowpea project say it has been hugely satisfying. The cost of producing cowpea, for example, will come down and so cowpea will be afforded by many more people who are now finding it probably too expensive for them to, co to, to consume. So. Uh, and also the farmers who grow it, they are going to make a lot of margins of close to 25% or about 25% uh, of margin from the production. They are positive it could help resource poor farmers and enhance food and ecological security in Africa. Next on the program, I bring to you an interview I had some time ago with the regional head, West Africa, of the African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF, Dr. Isufu Kolo Abdurrahman, on the Port Bora or Maruka Resistant Cowpea Project initiative of the AATF. Talking about the ATF's Maruka Resistant Kalpi project yes. in Nigeria at the Amadbilo University, yeah. what prompted this and how did it exactly start? All the national research institutes like ABU, the international research institutes like AITA, who had mandate, which had mandate for Kalpi, they look at the whole world collection of Kalpi. We couldn't find any single variety that is resistant. So then, the cowpea groups working on cowpea said, why don't we take, try to take this technology and develop a Maruka resistant cowpea for our farmers? So this is how the idea came and ATF was put, has took responsibility to coordinate the whole effort to develop this Maruka resistant cowpea. Okay, so how many confined field trials have been done so far? Only confined field trials have been so far because there is, for any GM crop, initially you start with the confined field trials. You look at, you gather all the data on the biosafety of a crop. You submit this data to the biosafety management office in the country, authority in the country. When we look at all the data now with the experts, they are able to say this crop is safe, it does not present any harm to the environment, to human health, or to any uh, soil, organism, anything. It is safe for human consumption. Then they will allow us to go to the farmer's trials. This is how it is done in the US. This is how it is done in Europe. But I know that the idea of this project was to make the seeds available to farmers in 2017. Yeah. And that was subject to approvals from regulatory agencies identification of effective and stable Maruka resistant lines and efficient transfer of the gene to traditional varieties through conventional breeding. Yeah. So what is the situation at the moment? Okay, most of the things you have said have been done. The gene has been transferred by doing normal conventional genetic. When we get the first line which was modified using biotechnology, we cross it to the farmer's varieties preferred varieties uh, to develop a new, to modify the farmer's variety. This technique in genetic language, breeding language, conventional is back crossing. So that was done. And we have tested in different regions in Nigeria. We, con we conducted our tests in Zaria, in Zamfara, and in Kano. We got confined environments. Outstanding performance. Okay, now, how are farmers expected to access 
these seeds, you know, after all the conditions. Have oh, been farmers, who, farmers who have seen it, the cowpea, first of all, they love it. They keep on asking us about the cowpea. But how would they get it? But no, we'll go, how they get it, we'll, we'll go, we'll, we'll get agreements, MOU, with the seed companies. We want Nigerian private seed companies to take it and be in charge of commercializing the seeds. Okay, so how sure are we that these seeds will work in our farming system here in Nigeria? Oh, for sure. We give the seed to the farmers to try in our confined environments. And, um, and we invite a group of farmers to visit our trials. They get surprised. You may ask our communication specialist, I will tell you from truth. Farmers love it. Farmers who have seen it, hundreds of farmers have visited our trials. They love it. And we did ourselves a survey. More than 60% of farmers in northern Nigeria consider PBR, our Maruka resistant cowpea, as the number one select variety they like. Okay, I know there are quite a number of concerns about the GM technology in this part of the world. Mm. So, how safe is the Maruka resistant um, cowpea for it consumption? It is as safe as any other cowpea in the market. This is the first GM BT cowpea in the world what we are developing. This is the first one in the world. Okay, so for Nigerians so, out there, you know, watching you, and, uh, this is the first of its kind. This is what the is your word one. of assurance to them concerning no, this particular No, because we variety? analyzed what I tell you. We took leaf samples. We had analyzed the plant sample, leaf, flowers, everything. We took all the samples and we analyzed them chemically and compare it with the normal cowpea, there is absolutely no much differences. Okay, now what far-reaching implications does it have for the Nigerian economy, you know, in the long run? People. Cowpea, people think cowpea is a subsistence crop. This is the first mistake. Beans, people think it is only a subsistence crop. That's the first mistake. Cowpea is highly commercial crop. Very commercial crop. Most of the millionaires in northern Nigeria, and if you go to Niger, in southern Niger, because northern Nigeria is southern Niger, most of the millionaires you find started with selling cowpea. Nigeria imports 40% of its beans. 40% of the beans consumed in Nigeria are imported from Niger, Burkina, and, uh, <laughs> and Chad, even from Chad. People don't know Nigeria imports beans. So, and it, this represents billions of neras. I don't say millions, I say billions of neras in saving this cowpea will bring to Nigeria. Okay, can the BT cowpea um, seed be replanted and does it degrade the environment? The cowpea seed can be replanted generation after generation for almost 1,000 years or 2,000 years or for 1 million years if you can save the seeds. And we, we, we produce it, we multiply the seeds. And can the land And now we plant it every year, and the land is good. It, does, it has no detrimental effect on the land. The land can be reused for planting? For anything, any crop you want. Thank you very much, sir, for <laughs> okay, joining thank me you. on the yeah. program. And that was Isufu Kolo Abdurrahman, the regional director West Africa of the African Agricultural Technology Foundation speaking on the BT cowpea in Nigeria and you've heard them right the BT cowpea seed can be replanted and it does not degrade the environment we'll take a quick break and the program will continue shortly stay with us When Agri Biotech visited the site for the BT Cowpea project at the Amadou Bilo University, I spoke with the project's trial manager, Dr. Mohamed Umar, on activities involved in that project. And I'll bring you that interview. Now, let's talk about the ongoing research you know, to combat this Maruka challenge. 
um, at the institute at the moment. So we conducted several years of uh, field testing and uh, we identified some promising lines that perform wonderfully where they confer resistance to these insects. So when they see that one, we have selected some of them and then we now look at the one that is adapted in the country and we started making crosses. We started making crosses with the, our adapted materials, which is already commercialized. So we married the two, make a crossbreeding to insert the gene into our, our farmer's preferred variety in the country. And we have done so for uh, so many generations. And after then, we took those uh, materials, derivatives that we obtained from the crosses we made. We tested them also across different locations because the work has been done in the area here. After then, we take it to Kano, which is in the uh, Sudan savanna, as also to Bakura in Zamfara, which is also in Sudan's uh, savanna, and also transition to Sahelian zone, where the rainfall is not as high as that of uh, Zaria. That's what we did. Okay, so what, what kind of variety is this BT variety? Well, BT, when we say BT means Bacillus transgensis. The BT means Bacillus transgensis, meaning that it's a name of a soil bacterium. It's a bacterium in the soil, so it's just the name. So when the gene was identified from that soil bacterium, we now take the, the, the names and give it the, the name, the G, uh, BT gene. But the scientific name is called CRY1AB gene. CRY1AB gene. That is the uh, BT gene, the gene isolated from the soil bacterium, which is confer resistant to yeah, this uh, Maruka uh, vitrata, the food borne insect. Okay, now what makes it different from the organic cowpea? Yeah, the organic or the conventional cowpea we, or beans that we are growing in the country, it has no gene that is confer resistant to this insect. That's the only difference. But if you look at morphologically, there's, there's no difference. The conventional and the transgenic one. Okay, what was the observation as regards you know, pest infestation of the plant? Yeah, the, you know, the mechanism that the, the, the gene is working is that uh, is, uh, when, the, when the maruka is searching for food, so it will go, when it says that uh, this uh, one, it may not find it may be palatable, so it will go to the one that is susceptible, it doesn't carry the gene. So you see there's no damage. When we do the, the damage assessment, we realize that uh, we can call it zero damage for the transgenic one unlike the conventional one where it has a high damage to uh, 70 to 80 percent were damaged by this insect. That is the severe infestation. Okay, what, what exactly is in the transgenic plant that makes it repulsive to pests like um, the maruka? Well, the, the, the only things, our additional value was that of uh, the gene, new gene that was inserted into it. That is the CRY1AB gene is the only thing that is differentiated from the conventional one and also make it to be more uh, resistant to this uh, insect. Because the other ones doesn't have such kind of gene. It is not, uh, they are susceptible to this uh, maruka, the other conventional copies. Okay, and um, with your interaction with these farmers, how receptive were they to this technology? Yes, we also did what we call free France ranking for the farmers and perceptions kind of uh, study with the farmers and also invited farmers at the end. Uh, apart from the farmers that participated in the trial, which is farmer managed trial, we invited other farmers uh, to come to see it for the first time and then to go through the field. And please go through, the, the select which one do you like best and tell us the reason why you selected this one. So the, about 70% uh, across the location, they selected our variety, they are the new entry. And the major reason they said, the major reason is protection against this insect because it was only to spray because they used to spray more than five times. And this one spray only two times and then was high yield. They say this is one of the uh, priority, the first reason that, that makes them to prefer this our day entry. The second one is early maturity because that one matured earlier, much, much earlier than their own. Uh, as, as I said, up to the time we terminated this year's trial, the farmer's material did not produce a single uh, a pulse. That is what they, they noticed, early maturity. And with the even cessation, early cessation of the rainfall, that to experience in Bakura and Minjibur, that's Axis, Kano and uh, Zamfara State. Uh, the materials also perform wonderfully. Okay, now what, finally, what do you have to say to Nigeria on this technology? Well, this is a very good technology that is the, 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 our, we, our research. For, because as I said, many years, 
has been spent in trying to, to identify the source of resistance to this uh, uh, insect. Many years has been spent without even identifying the source of resistance. With about 15 different, I don't know whether a, a common Nigerian has ever seen 10, 10, 10 different types of coffee, 10, only 10 different types of beans. But with this one, the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, with other scientists internationally, they got assembled as 15 different types of coffee, 15,000 assembled it. When they assembled it, they screened them and they couldn't find a single source of resistance. That's why they went into this uh, biotechnology means or technology to come up with the last solution to this one. And the last solution is to go for the host resistance uh, technology, that is to breed a variety that will have an inbuilt resistance that can uh, confer resistance to this insect. Keep the emails coming as we provide you the needed answers to questions on biotechnology and agriculture. Remember, the email address is agribiotech1 at yao.com. You could alternatively tweet your questions at agribiotech13 or post them on our Facebook page, Agribiotech on TVC. I am Lara Folayo. It's bye for now.